Masayang morning, virtual learners! We welcome you to a day full of learning and discoveries. I am Ma'am Roxanne Bautista, your resident science teacher. For our objective in today's lesson, you, the student, shall be able to describe the feedback mechanism involved in regulating processes in the female reproductive system. In your previous science lesson, the hormones estrogen, progesterone, together with the luteinizing hormones and follicle-stimulating hormones were briefly introduced to you. In today's discussion, you will learn more about the role of these hormones involved in regulation of the menstrual cycle and the preparation of the female body for conception and pregnancy. What is menstrual cycle? The menstrual cycle is the monthly cycle of changes that happens in the female reproductive system. Each menstrual cycle lasts roughly 28 days and begins at puberty. The entire duration of a menstrual cycle can be divided into four main phases. The first phase is known as the menstrual phase, followed by the follicular phase. Third is the ovulation phase, and lastly, the luteal phase. Let us first discuss the first phase, which is the menstrual phase. The menstrual phase is the first stage of the menstrual cycle. It is also when you get your period. This phase starts when an egg from the previous cycle isn't fertilized because pregnancy hasn't taken place. Levels of the hormones estrogen and progesterone also dropped. Here, the uterus sheds its inner lining of soft tissues and blood vessels which exits the female body from the vagina in the form of menstrual fluid. Did you know that blood loss of 10 milliliters to 80 milliliters is considered normal during menstruation? And the abdominal cramps that you usually experience are caused by the contraction of the uterine and the abdominal muscles to expel the menstrual fluid. Let us now proceed to the second phase which is known as the follicular phase. This phase also begins on the first day of menstruation, but it lasts to the 13th day of the menstrual cycle. Here are the following events occur during the follicular phase. It starts when the hypothalamus sends a signal to your pituitary gland to secrete a hormone that simulates the egg cell in the ovaries to grow. One of these egg cells begins to mature in a sac-like structure called follicle. It takes 13 days for the egg cell to reach maturity. Remember that while the egg matures, its follicle secretes a hormone that stimulates the uterus to develop a lining of blood vessels and soft tissue called endometrium. Let us now move to the third phase, which is known as ovulation phase. The ovulation phase starts when rising estrogen levels signal the pituitary gland to release luteinizing hormone. Luteinizing hormones will then stimulate the process of the ovary releasing a mature egg. This process is called ovulation. During ovulation, the mature egg travels from the ovary down to the fallopian tube and into the uterus. At any time, during the egg journey, sperm can fertilize it. Take note, ovulation happens at around day 14 if you have 28-day cycle 
right in the middle of your menstrual cycle. It lasts about 24 hours. After a day, the egg will die or dissolve if it isn't fertilized. The last phase of the menstrual cycle is known as the luteal phase. This phase begins on the 15th day and lasts till the end of the cycle. Here are the following events occur during the luteal phase. Remember that the egg cell release during the ovulation phase stays in the fallopian tube for 24 hours. If the egg cell is fertilized by the sperm cell, the fertilized egg will be implanted in the endometrium of the uterus. However, if a sperm cell does not impregnate the egg cell, within that time, the endometrium disintegrates, leading to menstruation. Here, both estrogen and progesterone levels will also drop, which will mark the beginning of the new menstrual cycle. The same hormones that control female puberty also control the menstrual cycle. This diagram shows how hormones control the menstrual cycle with negative and positive feedback. But before that, let us first discuss the meaning of feedback mechanism. When we say feedback mechanism, it is the process through which the level of one substance influences the level of another substance. It could be a positive or a negative feedback. In positive feedback, rising levels of hormones feedback to increase hormone production. Meanwhile, in negative feedback, rising levels of hormones feedback to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to decrease the production of hormones. Here's an example of negative feedback. The follicle stimulating hormones stimulates the ovaries to release estrogen. High levels of estrogen then prevent the further production of the follicle stimulating hormones. Estrogen also fuels the production of the luteinizing hormones, which is in turn controls the production of progesterone. High levels of progesterone stop the further release of the luteinizing hormones. Remember that the menstrual cycle includes a menstrual phase, a follicular phase, ovulation, and a luteal phase. Changes in the level of four hormones such as estrogen, luteinizing hormones, follicle-stimulating hormones, and progesterone occur during the menstrual cycle. And to summarize our lesson for today, let's have an activity. It is entitled, Fact or Bluff. You will answer fact if the statement is true, and block if it's not. Without further ado, let's start. If for number one, the menstrual cycle is the weekly cycle of changes that happens in the female reproductive system, is it a fact or a block? If your answer is bluff, then you are correct. Remember that the menstrual cycle is not a weekly cycle. Rather, it is a monthly cycle of changes that happens in the female reproductive system. Job well done. Number two. The menstrual cycle lasts an average of 28 days. Is it a fact? or a block.
If you answered back, then you are absolutely right. Let us now proceed to question number three. During ovulation, the inner lining of the uterus, also known as endometrium, flows out of the, of the body through the vagina. Is it a fact or a bluff? If you answered bluff, then give yourself a thumbs up because you are correct. It is during menstruation and not ovulation when the inner lining of the uterus, also known as endometrium, flows out of the body, flows out of the body through the vagina. Question number four. If a sperm cell does not impregnate the egg cell, the endometrium disintegrates leading to menstruation. Is it a fact or a block? If your answer is fact, then you are absolutely right. For the last question, in negative feedback, rising levels of hormones feed back to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to increase the production of the hormones. Is it a fact or a bluff? If your answer is bluff, then job well done, because you are correct. In negative feedback, rising levels of hormones feed back to the hypothalamus and pituitary gland to decrease and not increase the production of the hormones. Job well done, students. At this point, we will now move to our question and answer portion. You will be given 30 seconds to type your question in the comment section of our FB live stream. Then our teacher moderator will help us gather your question. And the timer starts now. Okay, time's up. For the first question, it came from a learner of Malanday National High School. And the question is, is it normal to cry more during period? It is very usual for us women to feel gloomy, unhappy, or anxious before and during our period. Crying is also normal, even if you don't know what is wrong. Remember that hormonal changes occur throughout the month as a result of menstruation and ovulation. These changes play a big role in why our moods can be so erratic in the weeks leading up to our period. These sensations are frequently associated with premenstrual syndrome or PMS. Moreover, PMS symptoms such as sadness and crying can last far into the first days of our menstruation. And for the next question, it came from a learner of Dalandana National High School. And the question is, why do we poop more on our period? Remember 
The increase of hormone prostaglandins is one possible cause why we poop more during your period. Prostaglandins are hormones released by our bodies just before menstruation. These hormones cause the uterus muscles to contract. These contractions aid the, aid the removal of the uterine lining. At the same time, period hormones may cause muscle contraction in the intestine and bowels near the uterus, resulting in more frequent bowel movements. They also decrease our body's ability to absorb water, resulting in softer stool and an increased risk of diarrhea. Okay, that's all for today. I hope that you had a meaningful participation in today's discussion. Thank you and see you next week as we welcome you again to another day of learning and discoveries. Padayon, great students!